Hi, Patty Simone here with Women Centric Experts and Authors Interview, and we are delighted to be talking with Lisa Bloom, who is one of the keynote people at the Women's Leadership Exchange Conference that we're at in New York City. So, Lisa, thanks so much for taking the time to talk, and please tell us about your book and some of the things that you went over inside that that got so much laughter. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah, I tend to be a little bit of a smart aleck, even though I'm talking about serious subjects, and that's the case in my book as well as speaking. And so I, I'm, I'm glad that people appreciate my offbeat sense of humor. Uh, my book is called Think Straight Talk for Women to Stay Smart in a Dumbed Down World. It's a New York Times bestseller. It just came out uh, in June of 2011. And I begin with the, the book with the statistic that 25% of young American women would rather win America's next top model than the Nobel Peace Prize. About the same number, about 23%, would rather lose their ability to read than their figure. So, that's ah! di very disturbing. <laughs> it is very disturbing, and it made me, frankly, want to pull my hair out when I first read this. So, I decided to look into the problem a little more deeply. You know, is it just me? Is this just one survey? Or is there really something going on? Well, as I researched this problem for about two years and interviewed a lot of women, uh, I discovered that the problem is broader and deeper than I ever could have imagined. That the majority of college women could name more Kardashians than wars we are in. Uh, that the majority of American women don't know what Roe v. Wade is. That most Americans couldn't name a single branch of government. That we're strikingly ignorant about some really important facts about our world. Only 2% of high school seniors, for example, know what Brown versus Board of Education is, one of the most important Supreme Court decisions in our history and one of the most important events in the 20th century in America that led to school desegregation and led to the Civil Rights Movement. So uh, we have a problem, and the problem is the dumbing down of America. And in the book, I explored how this affects women in particular. You know, it's a problem for women and men. It's just as many men have this problem as women do. But the distractions are different. For women, the distractions are tabloid media, the celebrity culture and obsession about our appearance. And we're spending an enormous amount of time and money and mental attention on these issues. When I argue that we should be focusing on more substantive issues, that when we reconnect with our communities and our world, not only does it help the world, it helps us. It helps us become more hap happier people and lead more meaningful lives. And, you know, every time someone asks you a question um, when you were inside, you mentioned a book. <laughs> yeah. So if you could name drop some of those books, some of the, sure. some interesting substantive reading that people can, you know, get their minds around and, and improve themselves after reading it. Yeah, it, it's funny how every time somebody asks me a question, I have a book recommendation. I'm a great reader. I love books. I read about a book a week. And I feel like I've learned almost everything that I know from books. Uh, there's a book called The Life You Can Save by Peter Singer. It's a little short book. And it answers the question of what is your obligation to help others? Should you be giving $100? Should you be giving 5% of your income? What kinds of organizations should you support? Should you be helping your local college or should you be giving to a child who's starving in the third world? I, mean, I think these are questions we all grapple with at one time or another. Maybe we bury them at some point and decide, you know, I just don't want to think about it anymore. It's too complicated. It's too hard. Or somebody's doing a walkathon. I'll give them $25 and then I don't have to think about it. Well, I think these are some of the most important questions we can ask ourselves, and this book answers the questions, I think, beautifully. There's another book called Half the Sky by Nicholas Kristof and Cheryl Wudun, and it's about women in the third world right now, that the, the horrible oppression that women still face, bride burnings, women dying in childbirth, girls who can't go to school. Um, but it's, all, it's about their oppression, but it's also about opportunities for change. It's about programs that are really working to help girls get out of a child bride situation. For example, where they're married off at age nine, and really it's no more than a legalized rape of those children. And keep them in school. And girls who stay in school, and keeping girls in school is my passion, because when a girl stays in school, uh, not only does she get more educated, she ends up marrying later, she has fewer children, those children have better nutrition, those children get an education. It tends to break up the cycle of poverty, there are smaller households, it decreases overpopulation, so it's called the girl effect. Yeah, we have we have an immense effect on our communities around us by, by what we're doing, and, and if we're hampered in our efforts, then, you know, everything around us is hampered and stymied. Yeah, and most aid organizations now, including 
including Bill Clinton's organization, the Clinton Global Initiative, uh, which is a very prestigious group, they know that if you give $100 to a woman in the third world, she's generally going to spend it on educating her children and providing good nutrition for them. If you give that money to a man in the community, very often they'll gamble it away or they'll spend it on alcohol. Now, of course, those are generalizations. There are many good men and there are, there are bad women. But overall, that is the reality, uh, that women tend to invest in their families and their communities, and they tend to use the money more responsibly to build up their own small business, for example. Women who are educated, women who own their own businesses in the third world are less likely to be the victims of domestic violence. They're less likely to tolerate abuse of their own children. You know, there are just so many wonderful benefits to helping them. So that's, that's why I'm passionate about it. And you did mention a couple of good resources that people can give to help facilitate and empower more women in third world countries. Right. Um, my website, by the way, is think.tv, where we discuss a lot of these issues, and I try to keep it, keep it updated. There's an organization called globalgiving.org, which has a lot of different targeted programs. If you go on that site, you, could, you can search for girls or women's projects and find ones that are appealing to you. For example, you can give a bicycle to a girl in Cambodia. That's the difference to her between going to school and not going to school, because otherwise she has to walk for miles and she may just decide to give up on it. But the bicycle makes it possible for her to go to school. Um, there are programs um, that you can send a girl to school for three dollars in India. Um, and as I said uh, just now, my law firm sends thousands of girls to school every year. It's probably the most gratifying thing that I do. It makes me feel that, you know what, I don't need another pair of shoes. I'd rather send a bunch of girls to school today. And I do that a lot. I'd like to encourage women to have impulse giving in the way that we have impulse spending, right? There are all these right, giant yes. corporations that tell us we need the latest lip plumper or eyelash extender or elbow sloughers is the latest one I heard oh about. God. Apparently, I'm supposed to be sloughing my elbows no, I'm not and I'm, I'm remiss. And, uh, you know, but a lot of us, we feel like we need to pick me up, we'll buy a pair of shoes, right? or some cosmetics project. Um, and I'd like to ch shift that to if you need a little pick me up, send a girl to school, you know, and think about what a life that you've changed you know that's the ultimate pick-me-up isn't it and and the impact that that changing that one life creates a cycle of change within that girl's life and in, within everyone that she connects with well you know and, and I talk in my book think about what my life would be like if I had been born in a place for example in the Swat Valley in Pakistan where girls don't go to school where they're terrorized out of going to school what my life would be like to me one of the greatest joys is to be able to pick up a book or click around online and find out what's going on and you know you know, if my mind were so devalued that I was just a vehicle for producing children and for doing menial labor all my life, what that would do? What, you know, would I, would I literally lose my mind? I mean, I might, you know, and I think about the girls all over the world who are experiencing that right now. Right. Well, thank you so much for all your efforts in educating the rest of us about what the possibilities are to do that impulse giving, as you called it, versus impulse spending. Uh, and hopefully you'll, you'll spark some people to, to begin that kind of thing as a daily habit in their lives. Uh, also with your book, giving them ideas with that. So uh, tell us a again about the book, and sure. obviously it's online, right? Sure. The book is called Think, Straight talk for women to stay smart in a dumbed down world. You can get it on my website, think.tv. You can also get it on any of the book sites, Amazon, Barnes & Noble. You can go to your little independent bookstore. Um, if you can't afford it, a lot of people say, I can't afford even to buy a book. I say, go to your local library and tell them you want this book, and you'll get them to order it not only for you, but when you're done, you know, hundreds or thousands of people can read it after you. So um, I also have a spot on the site where you can donate the book to a local library or school. And a lot of people have been doing that, which makes me feel uh, really good that we can donate the book to, to girls and women who need it. I would say the number one thing people tell me about the book is, I'm buying this for my daughter women and men. I had a guy who said for Father's Day I asked my three daughters to read your book. That's what I wanted from them. That's great. Um, and I have a lot of men reading the book too, even though it's really it's a book written for women and girls. But a lot of men read the book and they say I'm reading this so I can understand how women think. And they've gotten a lot out of it too. So if you have a chance to get the book and to read it, let me know on Twitter. Uh, on Twitter, I'm just Lisa Bloom. I'm very easy to find. Also on Facebook, I have an author page. And let me know what you think, right? Because the book is called Think, so I want to know what your thoughts are. I don't tell you in the book what you should think. I just encourage you to think. And I tell you how to reclaim the time in your life, how to read thought-provoking books and news stories online, how to reconnect and re-engage with the world. It's up to you what you do with it. 
Yeah. I just want you to use your mind. After all, we've, you know, our, I, think, I feel like our foremothers fought so hard for us to have these opportunities in education. And we're doing so well in school. Anybody, any of us can walk into a library and get a book or click around online and read something. So let's use that opportunity. Great. Well, great advice. Thank you so much for that inspiration and the message. And let's go, ladies. No excuses. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Thank you.